Good afternoon, everyone. I want to uh, thank you all for joining us today. And I apologize for the late start, but we've just concluded our most, brief, brief, most uh, recent briefing. I'd like to start by saying the thoughts of uh, Joe, the thoughts of Joanne and I, are with everyone who has been affected by these storms. And as West Virginians, we're all praying for those who have lost loved ones. Unfortunately. We've dealt with weather emergencies all too often in the past several years, so we were prepared to act quickly. As you all know, a huge sail blanketed nearly the entire state of West Virginia yesterday, and that's when we opened the state's emergency operations center. Shortly after, I issued a state of emergency for 44 of our 55 counties because of the uncertainty of the path of the storms that were coming. The declaration allowed us to quickly pull together resources and put boots on the ground. And by last night, we had 150 members of our National Guard prepared to assist it with rescue and response efforts. Our first responders and local emergency management officials have been working around the clock. And as, as always, we are very appreciative of all their efforts. And for those of you watching or listening, that still may have unmet needs, please contact your local Office of Emergency Management. If it's an emergency, call 911. But before I get into specifics, I'd like to take a moment to thank our congressional delegation, Senator Joe Manchin, Senator Shelley Moore Capito, Congressman Evan Jenkins, who is with us, Congressman David McKinley, and Congressman Alex Mooney. They have already made contact with FEMA and other federal agencies on our state's behalf. Also want to thank the Senate President, uh, Bill Cole, and Speaker Tim Armstead for their support during this event. This afternoon, I'm joined by several cabinet secretaries and agency heads who are assisting. Those include DHHR Secretary Karen Bowling, Transportation Secretary Paul Maddox, DMAP Secretary Joe Thornton, Adjutant General James Hoyer, Homeland Security Director Jimmy Jeanette, along with our State Health Director Dr. Gupta. I want to thank all of you for the work that you've uh, performed over the last uh, couple of days. I'd also like to give you a quick update on where things are right now. I just recently got back from the National Guard Joint Operations Center where I was fully briefed on their response and learned more about the devastation. I'm saddened to report that at this point we have confirmed 14 individuals who have lost their lives in the storm. Our hearts go out to all their families. I had planned to fly around the affected areas myself today, but wasn't able to because all state aircrafts are currently being used for rescues. As recently as the past hour, we had state helicopters conducting rescue operations in and around Glenn Denon, Commissioner Carper, it's good to see you here. Our biggest challenge continues to be high water. Initial reports from our local emergency management officials indicate at least six counties have seen extensive structural damage. Early reports indicate more than 100 homes have been seriously damaged or destroyed. The hardest hit counties appear to be Greenbrier, Nicholas, Kanawha, and Webster although I can tell you from watching the footage, the damage is widespread and devastating. Our focus remains on search and rescue. Top priorities for those missions are in Raynell, Richwood, White Sulphur Springs, and Northern Kanawha County. We have been in contact with our electric companies and know that they are working hard to restore power. Latest estimates show approximately 66,000 are still without power. Natural gas service has been shut off in White Sulphur Springs and Caldwell, with more than 1,500 customers affected. And they're working on the restoration, but it could take some time to have the gas back on. Our forestry division is working hard to assist with clearing downed trees. The Division of Highways reports that we currently have 60 road closures, and that number is expected to grow. They are also working to construct a gravel road on the back side of the shopping plaza to rescue those stranded up in Elkview. Our DHHR 
is working with health care providers to address any needs that they may have. Although we don't believe any hospitals have been significantly impacted, several nursing homes have been affected, and DHHR is working with them to address their residents' needs. Currently, 200 National Guard members are now actively assisting in eight counties, and I have authorized up to 500 of our members of the National Guard to come and help during this disaster. They are assisting local responders with swift water rescue, <coughs> excuse me, search and extraction efforts, and health and welfare checks. The National Weather Service reports that there is still the potential for additional rainfall, and they are closely watching potential pop-up showers along I-64. Weather has been hindering our aviation missions, but the storm seemed to be lifting for now. Again, for those needing immediate assistance, please contact your local office of emergency management. And if it's an emergency, call 911. Currently, at least 17 shelters are open. Groups such as the Red Cross, the Salvation Army, and VOAD have stepped up, and we certainly do appreciate their assistance. It's been a long 24 hours, and the next 24 hours may not be much easier. But I know that West Virginians, as you have always done, will continue to help your friends, families, and neighbors as they begin to clean up and rebuild homes that have been destroyed. Donations will continue to be accepted through the American Red Cross, the West Virginia Voluntary Organizations Active in Disaster, or VOAD group, and many churches and community organizations. Now, amid the tragedies, we have already heard numerous stories of heroic actions for our outstanding emergency responders. In Richwood, the state police and local responders managed to rescue a woman who's, who was trapped in her car with water rising up to her neck. Members of the West Virginia National Guard and firefighters across the state have risked their own lives to rescue people stranded on rooftops and in overflowing rivers. And while it appears the active phase of this event will end today or tomorrow, there will be an enormous amount of recovery work. So please continue to work together and support each other as West Virginians always do. At this time, I'd like to invite Congressman Jenkins to update us on his conversations with U.S. Army Corps of Engineers activities. Congressman. Thank you. Thank you, Governor, very much. And again, our heart goes out uh, to all of the West Virginians who have been impacted by this, and especially the, the idea of loss of life. Uh, Governor, thank you for inviting me to the briefing a little while ago. As a West Virginian, I'm reassured, as all West Virginians should be, that your office and your cabinet are doing all that they can and are well prepared to address the needs of the people of West Virginia. And to our Senate and House uh, leadership, thank you for your leadership. I came back from Washington, D.C., drove last night and uh, met with the Corps of Engineers this morning. A lot of concern by the citizens about the, the status of the rivers, tributaries, and in particular, Summersville Dam, uh, uh, Bluestone Dam, and also uh, uh, Sutton Dam. Uh, the good news is that we're reassured uh, that uh, the dams uh, are, are certainly stable, they are safe, uh, containing the water as designed, and that the Corps of Engineers is fully involved with the appropriate release to address the downstream issues, whether it be getting a community out of water and also protecting and making sure that uh, uh, rivers and streams, uh, uh, to the extent possible, don't overflow. Uh, we are reassured from the Corps of Engineers that the Canal River, while we can look out the window and see its significant height, they are not expecting widespread, significant out-of-bank uh, uh, flooding nor for the Ohio. So that's reassurance for the communities along the Canal River and the Ohio River. The significant rainfall uh, is historic. Three examples. High water mark in Alderson of the Greenbrier River, 22 feet, the third highest in recorded history. The Elk River at Queen Shoals, 32 feet. It was the highest since 18, 1888. The Gauley River, Belva, high water mark, 27 feet, the highest since 1932. So this amount of rainfall over this brief period was significant. 
and the uh, stability, the safety and the structure and the control through the Corps of Engineers of the water uh, is, is uh, doing what it was charged to do. We look forward to working with the entire congressional delegation. Uh, we're all on the ground uh, to assist with the FEMA de declaration through the president uh, in an expedited way. And again, Governor, thank you for your leadership. Absolutely. Thank you, uh, Congressman. At this time, I'll take uh, questions from the press uh, that either I or some of my cabinet uh, will be able to respond to. So, yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, I can talk about that, uh, and I may have to call on Jimmy or, uh, <laughs> but anyhow, uh, that uh, particular lake belongs to the U.S. Forestry Division, and basically the state has no control over that, that's up to the division. However, inspectors did go in and look at it. They, uh, uh, the report was that the dam or the uh, 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 impoundment was operating as it was designed to do, and there was no danger to uh, the downstream communities. So that was, there was uh, we started hearing about that early yesterday afternoon, and we did get people in there, but our report was very positive. So we we're glad about that. Questions? Okay, well, thank you all for coming. Appreciate it.